Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hiba and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Manchester. In my A-levels, I achieved an A-star in biology, an A in maths and an A in chemistry. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the things that I did that were absolutely fundamental in allowing me to achieve these grades and go on to study medicine. Most importantly, although these tips and techniques played a massive role in allowing me to achieve high grades, they're actually not difficult to do and are small changes that you can definitely easily make. If you follow these tips, you're guaranteed to meet or surpass your A-level predictions and open the doors for your future whether that's going to the university you want to get into or getting on the course that you're aiming for. The first incredibly easy thing that you can do and I did myself is to write down the grades you want to achieve on a piece of paper and then put that piece of paper up somewhere that you'll see it every day. I know what you're thinking, how is this actually going to help me achieve those grades? Well actually it's scientifically and psychologically proven that when you write your goals down you're much more likely to be successful and achieve them, up to 42% more likely to be exact. I was told this by my college when I was revising for my A-levels and despite being a bit skeptical I thought I don't really have anything to lose apart from the 10 seconds that it's going to take me to write on a piece of paper and then put that piece of paper up. So that's exactly what I did. I got a piece of paper and on the piece of paper I still remember I wrote I will get at least three A's in my A-levels and then I stuck that onto my wardrobe. And every day it would motivate me to think of exactly what I want to accomplish, exactly why I'm on this journey and what I want to get from it. Of course doing this alone without doing anything else to prepare for your exams is probably not going to be enough to reach your goals but this is something that will take you less than 10 seconds and something you can easily do to increase your encouragement and motivation and just boost you up that one step closer to your goals. The next thing that I did that I think is absolutely essential is to start your revision early. Too many times students with incredible potential won't do well on their A-levels because they'll just leave revising for their A-levels too late. If you're incredibly intelligent and you have a great memory then yes you may be able to pass your A-levels by revising last minute but you won't remember every single detail of what you've learned in the past two years and that is what an exam board is looking for in an AA star student. In your A-level you're going to be examined on a ridiculous amount of content and you won't be able to know the content inside out if you haven't given yourself sufficient time to understand it. Provided that you've kept on top of your work over the past two years, doing homework on time and doing tests on time, I would suggest starting to create revision material for your exams a good two to three months before your final exams at the very least. This next tip links in with the last one but I don't think I could have done anywhere near as well as I did in my A-levels if I hadn't created a paper revision timetable. If there's only only one tip you take away from this video, it absolutely has to be this one. You must be able to visualize exactly how much time in days you have left until your exams. For all of your subjects, you need to sit down and make a list of all of the topics you need to go through, all of the things you need to make notes on, all of the past papers you need to go through, all of the revision cards you need to make, for example. And you want to put them into a timetable to make sure you're organizing your time in a way that's going to allow you to get through all of the things that you need to get through. Trust me, when you have stuff just floating around in your head, you're not able to accurately say how much time it's going to take for you to get through all of that. So making a timetable for me just made it absolutely clear about exactly what I have to do. I made a paper timetable on an A3 piece of paper and I stuck it onto my wardrobe. And every day when I'd wake up, I'd know exactly what it is that I needed to do. I would be able to see what impact it would have on my timetable if I was to procrastinate and not get my work done for that day and how much it would just shift everything in my timetable over. And it just gave me the peace of mind that I've planned everything out and if I go at this pace, I will get everything that I want to do done before the exams. So I'd know exactly by which date I'd have all of my notes condensed, by which date I'd have all my past papers done, by which date I would have done all of the extra revision sessions and so forth. On your timetable, you also want to make it really clear which date your exams are on so you can actually visualize how far they are. I still have a picture of one of the timetables that I made when I was revising for my A-level exams and I'll insert a picture of it here so you can see what it looked like. This was a nine-week timetable that I made and I made a timetable for the nine weeks before this as well and that timetable was completely full and I'd completed all of the stuff on that timetable. As you can see, starting revising early meant that two weeks before my exams had started, I'd already finished everything that I initially wanted to get done. So the last few boxes I just left blank so that as I went along I could just add in anything new that came up or anything that I wanted to spend extra time on before the exams. If you want to do well in your exams, honestly, make your revision timetable your best friend. The next tip is one that a very wise teacher at my college gave me and that is don't practice until you get it right 
practice until you can't get it wrong. There may well be times when you're doing past papers and you've got the questions right and you've done really well on the paper. This isn't an indication that you should now stop revising for that subject and shift your focus to a different one, especially if you're aiming for those high grades. How well you do in papers and in your revision tends to fluctuate a lot. And just because you've done well on one paper, it doesn't mean that you'll definitely now do well in your actual exam. Especially for subjects like maths and chemistry, you want to do the questions again and again and again and again so that you're so familiar with how to work through the questions that you know you'll be able to replicate this result in your actual exams no matter which numbers they put in or which equations they happen to give. Just getting it right once or twice is not enough practice to score highly in exams. I have some more incredibly valuable tips to give you but before I talk about them, once you all, fingers crossed, achieve your desired A-level grades, the majority of you will be moving cities to start university and a new chapter of your life this September. And what better way to do it than with Amber? Amber is a brilliant platform for students to book accommodation near their universities and they are kindly sponsoring this video. They have a huge variety of accommodation options that cater to all of your preferences. Their accommodation options include en suites, studio flats, shared properties, they have a wide range of lower budget options and also many many higher budget options as well. They're also completely flexible in how many people want to live together or how long you want to book for. Your booking experience is guaranteed to be seamless and stress-free because they offer 24-7 personalized assistance every step of the way and they also take care of all of the paperwork. They have loads of student-friendly policies such as free cancellations if you're affected by COVID or if you're in international and you're having troubles with your visa. They have over 1 million beds near over 800 universities in hundreds of cities, not only in the UK but also in Ireland, in the US, in Australia and several other countries in Europe as well. So you'll definitely find a place that you like that's suited to you and that's also near your university. Using Amber is going to be 100% less stressful than trying to find private accommodation on your own, so definitely definitely make sure to visit their website using my link which is going to be in the description to learn more about the fantastic accommodation services that they offer and to find out why they're rated as excellent by thousands of students on Trustpilot. Thank you very very much to Amber for sponsoring this video and now we're going to move on to talking about the next tips. So another thing that I made sure to do when revising for my A-levels was to make sure that I'm really familiar with the mark schemes. Every exam board marks differently so you want to be really familiar with what sort of answers your exam board is looking for, how much leeway they give with answers and especially in application-based questions what sort of answers they would consider acceptable. By by marking your practice papers yourself and taking the time to understand the mark schemes, you'll get a better insight into what is expected from you and how the marks are allocated. For example, in A-level chemistry, from spending time looking at my exam board's mark scheme, I knew that the exam board were looking for specific keywords when it came to definition questions. And if you didn't use those keywords, even if your definition was correct, the exam board wouldn't give you the mark. So there's a lot to learn from looking over mark schemes and I would highly recommend that you take some time to do this. The next thing that you want to make sure is that you both both memorize content and do past papers. I've mentioned past papers a couple of times in this video, but I actually also spent a very significant amount of time going through content and memorizing the content. You may well find that you learn better just doing one or the other, so just doing past papers or just learning content, but actually it's important in your revision that you incorporate both. According to your preferences and according to the subjects that you're doing, you can change the proportions of how much time you spend on doing each of these. So you can decide yourself how much time you want to spend memorizing and how much time you want to spend doing past papers. It doesn't have to be a 50-50 split, but you should do both. In subjects like biology, psychology, sociology, a lot of application of knowledge is involved here and in order to apply your knowledge it's vital that you're really familiar with the content. For subjects like these, if you just do past papers, although you have a really good idea of how to structure your answers, you won't be familiar with every single topic they could possibly assess you on, so for these subjects it's difficult to rely just on past papers. If you spend time memorising and learning the content, you can potentially answer any question that could come up on anything in the curriculum. But if you only do past papers, you do limit yourself to only being able to answer questions on the topics that you happen to have come across in the past papers that you've done. In subjects like maths and chemistry, again, you want to spend a decent amount of time being really familiar with what the possible topics are that could come up in your exam. But past papers in these subjects can be relied on more heavily because they involve knowing a process and repeating that again and again for a different set of numbers or equations. With that said though, again, you wouldn't be able to do past papers in maths or chemistry either if you aren't familiar with the content and you aren't familiar with how to actually solve those equations or you're not sure what certain definitions mean. So it's definitely important to make sure you spend time on both 
content and on practice papers. Also, when you do practice papers, as it gets closer to exam time, it's really important to try and make sure you're doing the exam questions under time conditions. Because if your exam is an hour long, it's not going to really be helpful for you if you give yourself four hours to do that paper. The next piece of advice that I'd give is to make sure that you're using your college library. At this point in your studies, you may not be that used to spending time in a library because the last exams that you had were your GCSEs, and typically for GCSEs, you would revise at home. If you're one of the people that haven't tried spending time in a library, I really suggest that you do. I personally found that studying in a library where everyone else around me was studying as well was really helpful to motivate me to stay on track and get my work done. It's like when you're at the gym and you're more motivated to exercise than if you were trying to do a home workout because literally everyone around you is exercising. Lastly, I always made sure to take breaks and prioritize sleep. It's always really important to reset and refresh your mind. If you do too much work non-stop at some point it does become counterproductive because your brain will become too tired to remember and consolidate all of the information that you're feeding it so although sometimes taking a break or having a lie-in does feel like a bit of a waste of time the actual waste of time would be if you spent loads and loads of time studying and you forget it the next day because your mind wasn't alert enough to remember it that would truly be a waste of time. So make sure you're sleeping enough so that what you're learning is actually staying in your brain. Those were some of my pieces of advice on how to do well in your A-levels, drawing from personal experience and what worked for me. I think these tips are really, really helpful and they're very easily incorporated into whatever you're doing already. They're definitely small changes, but they're going to make a huge difference. I really, really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please let me know in the comments. Also do subscribe to my channel and like this video as well. Good luck to everyone who's going to be sitting their A-levels this year and hopefully you'll come out with your predicted grades and better. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.